Okay, let's talk about quadratic equations. And if you're taking any sort of algebra course, algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, uh, anything beyond pre-algebra, you're definitely gonna uh, need to know how to solve quadratic equations. So what I'm gonna do in this video is teach you how to solve a quadratic equation like this, but really what I want you to do is, if you think you can solve this, challenge yourself. Go ahead and see what you can come up with. Put your answers in to the uh, comment section, and of course, uh, you can kind of compare how you did at the end of this video. But uh, solving quadratic equations is, again, an absolutely necessary skill. And I'm gonna kind of give you some big picture um, kind of roadmap in, t in terms of solving various quadratic equations. So it's kind of a big topic, but I'm gonna get into it, break it down nice and easy here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I've come to the conclusion that every student can be successful in math, but it requires two things. One, it requires a student um, be willing to do the work. Okay, so if you're not going to do the work in terms of mathematics, you're not going to be successful. But beyond that, what you need is clear and understandable math instruction, math instruction that you can get, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, definitely check out my math help program. I'm going to leave uh, links to all my stuff in the description of this video. Also, if you happen to be preparing for some sort of test that has a math section, I'm talking about things like the uh, ASVAB, GED, SAT, uh, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam. I have a large library of test prep courses I can help you out. If you homeschool, have outstanding middle school and high school level homeschool math courses you can check out. And if I need some math notes, I'm gonna leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get going and solve this quadratic equation. A uh, very, very important uh, skill for those of you, again, in any sort of algebra course. But let's just review some real basic things here. First of all, what is a quadratic equation? We're talking about quadratic equations. What is a quadratic equation? Put your answer into the comment section if you think you know what it is. But effectively, um, a quadratic equation is a polynomial of degree 2. Okay, a polynomial of degree two. So what does that mean? Well, let's go back here to our problem. This thing right here is a polynomial. Okay, now that's a whole nother uh, discussion why it's a polynomial, but this is a polynomial and its degree, its highest power is two. Okay, so this is a degree two polynomial and that's what makes a quadratic equation a quadratic equation. But what else do we need to know about quadratic equations, okay? Well, what you need to know is that there's always gonna be two solutions, okay? So uh, when you're looking at the degree of a polynomial, and this kind of goes beyond even quadratic equations, the degree of the polynomial is how many solutions you have, okay? So because we're dealing with a second degree polynomial, we're gonna have two solutions. Uh, sometimes there's gonna be real numbers, but sometimes it could be imaginary numbers. Again, this is a big topic, but let's just make sure you have some good fundamental basic knowledge about quadratic equations before we just start solving them, right? Because if you, you know, you're just going through the uh, steps, but you don't really know what you're doing or why you're doing it, then, you know, that's not uh, a smart way to learn math. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and talk about how we solve quadratic equations. Well, um, it all depends on the equation, the specific problem that we're dealing with. So sometimes, okay, not all the time, sometimes you can take the square root of both sides, okay? When you, uh, when you can't take the square root of both sides to solve a quadratic equation, let me give you an example, something like this, x squared is equal to 16. That's uh, a second degree um, polynomial quadratic equation. We can solve this easily by taking the square root of both sides. So do this when you can, but all problems are not gonna be like this. Like the problem that we're uh, looking at right now, we can't take the square root of both sides, okay? At least not in the form that it's in. So that brings us to our second technique that you need to know uh, when you're solving quadratic equations, and that is factoring, okay? You need to be able to factor trinomials, okay? Or just being um, able to factor polynomials. This is a very, very critical algebra skill, and if you, you're not good at factoring, you're gonna have a tough time solving quadratic equations. Okay, so if you can factor, that's what you wanna do. If you can't factor, you gotta go on to your next tool in our quadratic equation tool uh, box here. That's the quadratic formula, okay? So this is a whole topic in and of itself. 
And then there's another technique that we can use called completing the square. This is kind of like the long version of the quadratic formula. But uh, again, quadratic equations, big topic, and uh, you know what technique you're going to use. It's going to depend upon, upon the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually get it into this problem here. Okay, so here is the problem I said I was going to solve. Now, looking at it, it's not a problem like x squared is equal to 16. Okay, so here I could just simply take the square root of both sides, and this would be x is equal to positive negative 4. Okay, so again, uh, this would be our uh, two solutions. One is a positive 4, the other is a negative 4, and it's so easy. You could just take the square root of both sides, but here I can't do this. Okay. So what is our plan A? Well, our plan A is we're going to try to factor, all right? So that's our first kind of thing that we're going to uh, want to try to do. Now, uh, just because you're dealing with a quadratic trinomial, some sort of you know polynomial like this, doesn't mean that it's factorable. Sometimes you can factor, sometimes you can't, but you always want to attempt. You always want to try to factor, okay? And you're going to see why here in a second. So this is our plan A. We're going to think about, hey, can I factor this thing? And if you try to factor it and it's not factorable, then we got to go to plan B. That is the quadratic formula. This is our lifesaver. This always uh, will solve any quadratic uh, equation problem. Okay, but this was more work. So we've had to do this, not this. Okay, so my question to you is, can you factor this? Uh, well, actually, let me just go ahead and uh, highlight this right here. This trinomial, can you factor it? Because I'm kind of giving you a little bit of a pop quiz. Because if you can't factor this, or if you can factor this, that's going to be an indication of your factoring skills, your current factoring skills, okay? Again, if you don't know how to factor, you need to circle around and improve that if you're studying quadratic equations, which I assume you are because you're watching this video. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, see if you can factor this. This is the, That's the best way to uh, use this video. But let's move on with the problem. Okay, so indeed... We can factor this trinomial. Now, why we can factor this trinomial is another discussion. Let me give you a couple of recommendations here. One, I have a, a ton of uh, videos on my YouTube channel about factoring. But if you truly want to master all of this stuff, I would check out any one of my courses like Algebra 1 or, B of, of, or above. Excuse me. So I have like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, maybe even Pre-Calculus. All depends on what level you're at. I have all those courses. Okay, so 4x squared minus 3x minus 1 is factorable, and it factors into these two uh, binomials right here. These are our factors, 4x plus 1 times x minus 1. If I was to multiply these together, I would get back to this. So these are the factors. So why do we want to factor? Well, there's something called the zero product property. It goes like this. A times B is equal to zero. So if I have two things, okay, I said I have something times something else, and the answer is zero. Well, how does that, you know, how do we get to, if our answer is zero and we're multiplying two numbers, what does that tell us about the value of this number or this number? Well, one of these numbers must be zero or both numbers are zero, right? So it's either zero times zero, that's how you get zero, or zero times B or A times zero. So this is what we call the zero product property, okay? So these factors are, themselves are going to be zero. So what we're saying here is this times this is equal to zero, okay? So one thing I need to, um, uh, now I failed to kind of um, state here in the beginning is the following, okay? When you do have a quadratic trinomial, you always want to set this equal to zero, okay? So let's kind of go up here real quick and modify our thing. So when we're factoring, you want to set these equal to zero. You want to set um, all of these equal to zero uh, to kind of start things off, okay, in terms of and writing something in standard form, which is highest to lowest power. Okay, I'm kind of covering a lot of territory pretty quickly here. So, but anyways, this is important, okay? So we want to have our quadratic equation written in highest to lowest power and set it equal to zero. So if it's not currently equal to zero. In other words, let's say I had 4x squared minus 3x is equal to 1, okay, which of course you could have a problem like that. I got to scoot that one over and set this equal to zero. That is the first thing we need to do. Of course, this problem was already set up that way. So now let's go ahead and get back to the solution. All right, so here we have this factor times this factor is equal to zero. Great. This or this must be zero or I, both of them are zero. 
So we're going to uh, set each factor equal to zero to figure this out. So 4x plus 1, we're going to set that equal to zero, and x minus 1 is going to equal to zero. And then we're going to resolve uh, for the respective variables here. So here, x is equal to 1. That's one solution. And sometimes we can put a little 1 down there, indicating that's one solution. And then when I solve for x here, I'm going to move that negative 1 to the other side. So I have 4x. x is equal to negative 1 fourth. I can call this x2. But remember, when we're dealing with a quadratic equation, a degree 2 polynomial, you're always going to have two solutions. And here they are, 1 and negative 1 fourth. Those are the solutions to this quadratic equation. So my question to you is, how did you do? Did you do good? Did you get this right? Well, if that's the case, I must go ahead and give you a nice, lovely, happy face with a good old 1980, let's call it 6. 1986, that was a very good year. Uh, nice flat top haircut, an A plus and 100%. Nice job, okay? So some of you might be saying, why do you do these little crazy figures and stuff? Because, you know, when I was first studying um, algebra and whatnot, it was around these years. And you know what I was doing in school? I wasn't listening. I wasn't paying attention to anything. So on my little uh, test, I'm sure, back in my algebra classes, I wasn't doing too well. It needed... Uh, I needed my experience in the United States Marine Corps to really, you know, teach me something about discipline and paying attention. And later down the line, of course, I went to college and got my degree in mathematics and all that other good stuff. But here's the deal. Uh, you know, math is something that if you truly want to learn it, it's like I said in the beginning of this video, you're going to have to work at it. OK, so watching me do these uh, problems. You're like, oh, I understand. I totally get it. That's not the same as you being able to do this on your own. You have to practice. You have to follow through. Uh, but if this video is a good start, if you're like, oh, I get it. Okay, I can do this. Well, that's the whole you know, point of me making these videos to give you some momentum, give you some confidence. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. Uh, that definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, um, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content. I make it for you. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.